All right, today we're going to take a look at responsive design. We're going to create a simple web page. This is it right here. It's going to be created with HTML5. And it's going to, uh, the layout's going to be different as you get to different sizes. Just show it here, stretch it out a little bit. This is what it looks like. Ultimately, let's say full screen. This is what it looks like. When it changes sizes at a certain break point, for example, this sidebar will drop down to the bottom. All right. And it will go to 100% in width. Uh, that's one example. And because screen real estate is a premium on smaller devices, as we get down, I'm going to just not display the top banner so we're going to get a little smaller here and the banner goes away and there's reasons you might want to do that the banner becomes too small to really do any good or it's just taking up too much real estate and on phones real estate is a premium so that's what we're going to do we're going to do this video in two parts the first part will be the HTML layout be in HTML5 we'll be discussing some HTML5 and the second part will be the CSS so let's start with the HTML5 I'm working in a notepad plus plus that is my uh, editor I'm using for HTML I'm just gonna write it all by hand and if you got internet if you're using notepad plus plus you can look under run and you can inspect things in your browser as you're working so that's what we're going to do. But right now I have the bare bones basic setup for HTML5 document doc type HTML that's what makes it HTML5 I give a title responsive design I'm also using the Google shim or shiv I should say either or they're named both ways to help older browsers display HTML5 a little bit better and we have the style sheet which will be this which is completely blank right now but I went ahead and linked it as you can see we got the link uh, rail of style sheet type TXS and the name of the uh, style sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to build out this page. This is what the page looks like when it's finished. We have a header. We have a navigation. We have a main section and inside the main section we have a main area I should say. We have two sections. We have the uh, food for every taste section. Oh, by the way, this is a seafood, um, the photos is a seafood festival I went to. Uh, they are my photos. I will be leaving the code snippets at my website for you to use if you'd like, including the photos, which you can use for anything you want. There is no license attached to them. So you're free to use them for whatever you want. Those code snippets will be at my site, and there will be a link at the bottom of this video here on YouTube, uh, if you're viewing it on YouTube, that you can click to go get the code snippets. But anyhow, in this section, we have in, in inside of main, we have two sections. We have food for every taste section. See it opens and closes there. And then we have the arts and crafts section. Opens and closes there. Inside the uh, two sections, we have two articles. The first one's crabs and crawfish. The second one's shish kebabs. And, of course, this section has two articles as well. We have uh, wood carvings and ornaments. And after that, after the main area, we have an aside, which is the sidebar, which you saw. And we have some stuff in there with some links. And then we have a footer. And that's really all it's going to consist of so so let's let's go ahead and get started we will start with the header area and you notice that the header is different from head which is up here which is not displayed in the browser and the header is HTML5 and inside the header area I have a h1 tag with a title from a page uh, that will show on the page Pensacola Seafood Fettle, Festival though I give the title that's going to show up in the tab a little bit different name just to go along with the name of the course responsive design inside the header which you can do you can put your regular div tags I've got a div here 
ID of banner paint is where my banner is going to sit. I went ahead and give that ID because there's something I'm going to want to do with it later. Okay, after the header, we're going to go ahead and put the navigation. On navigation, we have the HTML5 tag, nav. There's debate in the community on should you use nav for all links or just for the main links. I personally go with just using for the main links. Uh, any, uh, not on all links on the page. That's just my own view, and that seems to be the popular consensus. And after nav, we got main. So we'll just go ahead and type that out. Inside main, we're going to have our two sections and four articles. So let me just go ahead and type this out real quick. that and then we're going to have another section here and we'll go ahead and put our two articles in there as well now let's open up our articles for easier read our section tag and article tag are also HTML5 tags as is main Let's talk about HTML5 a little bit while I'm doing this. HTML5 is meant for to be used for semantic reasons. For example, it allows search engines such as Google to better understand the structure of your page, where all your main content is, you know, what's considered an article, and stuff like that. And screen readers too, for those who are visually impaired, and other things such as those. Those are two main ones. However, you don't really want to use HTML5 tags for everything. If a div would go better, then use a div. The way I look at it is you kind of got to look at HTML5 as a newspaper. In a newspaper, you have sections like local news, world news, sports. Within those sections, you have articles. So that first lets you know what comes first and what comes second. Uh, section first, article second. There can be sections inside of articles. However, there can be only one main Per page, uh, you will get uh, WC3 error if you try to use more than one main per page. Uh, another way to kind of keep an idea of whether or not you should use uh, HTML5 semantic tag is, are you going to use a header in there like an H1, H2, or H3? If you are, then yes, most likely you want to use the uh, semantic HTML5 tags. But to put a banner in, I've seen websites use HTML5 section tag to do nothing but hold a banner. No heading tags, no nothing, just a banner. That's not, you know, give a div with an idea banner or banner paint or something like that would be better because there's really not semantic about an image. Okay? So, that's just a quick brief discussion of HTML5. And we have this in, and, and after main, we're going to have an aside for our sidebar. And after a side, we're going to have a footer. And there is the plain, simple structure of our page. And about the only thing you'll probably see is those links. Let me take a look. Oh, and I got the banner in there too as well. I forgot I had that in there. All right. So let's go ahead and add a little content. In our section first section we're going to go ahead and give it an h2 tag now you want to keep in mind you want one h tag h1 tag per page no more than one h2s and h3s you can have as many as you want but but being i know for sure will penalize you and i think google will also penalize you if you have more than one h1 tag per page so this section we're going to give it a title of food for every taste the next section we're going to give it a title of where is my next section at right here Arts and crafts. So I like to do things in increments. So let's take a look and see what we got here. See, there's food for every taste. Arts and crafts. Those are our two sections. For our first article, we're going to have crabs and crawfish be the title. That's going to be an H3 tag. And there's the content for that. For our second article, we're going to talk about shish kebabs. 
For our third article, we're going to talk about some uh, wood carvings in the arts and crafts section. And for our fourth article, we're going to talk about some ornament art. So there we go. So let's take a look and see what we have now. Completely unstyled. You'll notice I have images in. I have a uh, my section title with H2. I got the H1 up here. My banner, my links. Uh, we got our section one title, article one title, article two title, section two title, article one title, article two title plus the content, of course. And now we need to put the aside and the footer in, and we will be done. And you'll notice in the aside, I don't have any heading tags. I could have used one under quick polo for one or two, but I just didn't. And I have some links. I did not use the, the nav tag for these. I just use your basic unordered list for our links here. And under footer info, let's use your basic old paragraph tag footer information here. So to, let's take a final look at just the raw HTML structure of our web page that we are going to turn responsive. And there it is. Our title of our page, H1, our banner, our links, our title for section one with the two titles and the content for both articles, our title for section two, two titles for the articles with content. We got our side where the quick poll is and some quick links. And we got our footer. That is the raw HTML structure of the page. No CSS has been added yet. This is the shorter of the two videos. We're going to get into quite a bit of CSS, including media queries, on the next video. If this video has helped you, please give me a like or comment or subscribe or share. I sure would appreciate it. For more web and graphic design video tutorials, which are free but not necessarily on YouTube, I have more at my website, skeeterz71.com. Have a good day.